Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, we'll understand about Spring Cloud. We'll consider we have a microservices project. Let's say in our project we have multiple microservices. Consider microservice 1, microservice 2, microservice 3, so on and so forth. And here we have a client. And this client will consume the REST APIs from multiple microservices. We'll consider microservice 1 exposes some of the REST APIs. Microservice 2 also exposes some of the REST APIs. Microservice 3 also exposes some of the REST APIs. And this client will consume the REST APIs from multiple microservices. Now this is our a microservice project. Now let's understand the challenges in this microservices project. Well, in enterprise application, we may have a hundred and thousand of microservices and we may encounter a lot of challenges while building these microservices. Okay, so consider here in this project, we have only three microservices, but in, you know, enterprise application, we may have hundred and thousands of microservices. Okay. And here basically this client is calling the multiple backend microservices to get the response from different REST APIs. All right. And whenever this client call a multiple microservices, then this client have to remember the host and port of all the microservices that it want to communicate. Okay. So this is not a good idea or a best practice that the client have to remember all the host name and ports of all these microservices. And let's say whenever we introduce a new microservice in this project, then we have to configure that microservice hostname and port in the you know client so that client can call that particular microservice, isn't it? So manually doing all these things is not a good practice. So this is basically a challenge, and the solution could be like this: we can introduce one central component between client and backend microservices, and client will send a request to this central component. And this central component will route that request to appropriate microservice okay and we can call this central component as a api gateway all right so api gateway is basically a pattern that we can use to handle the client request and route that client request to appropriate microservice let's understand one more challenge over here so if you can notice here in this project we have only three microservices but in enterprise application, we may have a lot of microservices, isn't it? And each microservice have their own configuration file to maintain its configuration. All right. And let's say we have a requirement to change the configuration file of multiple microservices. Then we have to go into each and every microservice and then we need to change the configuration. So this is not a good idea or a good practice to go into each and every microservice and you know change the configuration file all right so there should be a solution like we can have a central place where we can keep all the configuration files of all these microservices and whenever there is a requirement to change the configuration of multiple microservices then we can simply go ahead and change in a central place over here okay for example let's say we use a git repository to keep all the microservices configuration files and whenever there is a requirement to change the configuration files of all these microservices, then we can go ahead and simply change in a Git repository and that change will reflect in all the microservices. All right, to externalize the configuration files of these microservices, we can implement one more pattern. Let's call it as config server. So this config server will externalize the configuration of multiple microservices in a central place. And whenever there is a requirement, to change the configuration we can simply change the central place that should be reflecting other microservices so this is another challenge let's understand one more challenge consider client want to consume the rest api of microservice one then client have to first send the request to api gateway and then api gateway will route that request to microservice one and consider microservice one internally calling microservice two okay and consider due to some reason microservice two is down then microservice 1 won't get a response from the microservice 2 and microservice 1 will return the error response to the API gateway and then API gateway will you know forward that error response back to the client. So if you can notice here 
If microservice 2 is down, then microservice 1 will continuously call to the microservice 2. So this is not a good idea that whenever microservice 2 is down and microservice 1 have to continuously call to the microservice 2. So this is basically wasting of resources. Okay, so there should be a challenge where this microservice 1 have to limit the number of calls to the microservice 2 whenever this microservice 2 is down or not available. So this challenge we can implement by using circuit breaker pattern. Next let's understand one more challenge. Consider in this microservices project we have three microservices microservice 1, microservice 2 and microservice 3 and let's say we have a requirement to scale microservice 1 project then we will start multiple instances isn't it let's say instance 1, instance 2 and due to some reason instance 2 is down and microservice 2 is down and we need a mechanism where we can keep track of all these microservices and its instances so that we can see what are the microservices are up and what are the microservices are down so in order to solve this you know issue we can use a service registry and discovery so this service registry and discovery basically maintains the hostname and port of all the registered microservices and its instances okay and this api gateway will basically get the hostname and port of particular microservice from the service registry okay so this api gateway will basically discover the particular microservice hostname and port from the service registry next let's understand one more challenge let's say client make a rest api call to api gateway and then api gateway will route that request to microservice 1 and microservice 1 will internally call to microservice 2 so this is complete a call hierarchy right and we need a log information of this complete you know call from start to end so this we can implement using distributed tracing distributed tracing so this distributed tracing pattern will help us to identify the complete call hierarchy from start to end okay next few more challenges like implementing load balancing and implementing centralized security in a api gateway so these are the challenges that we encounter whenever we develop the microservices project next let's say we want to develop one more microservices project then we'll basically use all these patterns like API gateway, service registry, config server, distributed tracing, circuit breaker. So basically we use all these pattern in this microservice project as well. It means that these are the basically common patterns or common design patterns that we typically use in each and every microservice project to address some of the issues or challenges. All right. And in order to implement these patterns, we have to write a code manually, right? So this is where Spring Cloud comes into picture. So if we use Spring Cloud, then we don't have to write the code manually because Spring Cloud provides implementation for all these patterns. Okay, so Spring Cloud basically provides a tools to implement these commonly used patterns in a microservices project. Okay, I hope you understood how Spring Cloud addresses all these challenges by providing different tools or different modules well if you can go to spring cloud official website over here you can see spring cloud provides tools for developers to quickly build some of the common patterns in a distributed systems so here distributed systems is nothing but a microservices project and spring cloud provides different tools or modules to build some of the common patterns so here common patterns meaning these different patterns like config server api gateway service registry circuit breaker distributed tracing security so these are the common patterns that we can use in each and every microservices project and spring cloud provides a tools or different models to solve or implement these different patterns in a microservices project okay so if you go to spring cloud official you know website page over here spring cloud provides different modules to implement different patterns for example here you can see spring cloud circuit breaker model which we can use to implement circuit breaker pattern next here we have spring cloud config model which we can use to implement a config server to externalize the configuration files of different microservices next here we have spring cloud gateway model which we can use to implement api gateway in a microservices project next we have spring cloud open 
model which we can use to make a rest API call from one microservice to another microservice and here we have spring cloud sleuth model which we can use to implement distributed tracing and next we have you know spring cloud stream model which we can use to implement you know asynchronous communication between multiple microservices all right so these are the you know few of the commonly used spring cloud models to implement different common patterns in a microservices project all right i hope you understood what is spring cloud and how it provides a solution for different common patterns in a microservices projects all right great i will see you in the next lecture